Uh, frankly, it's uh, exceeding expectations, but we always knew that the family was very good and uh, you know, their story in itself was very inspiring. But the reason we were just a little cautious at the start was because of the size, right? Previous to this, you know, five billion was the threshold for domestic all domestic IPOs. We breached that significantly with this, more than forty percent. And uh, so, even without any foreign anchor investors, it's very successful. And as you said, now the, the, even foreign are buying in. Hey, you know, Edison, so it's like a litmus test. I mean, first of all, it's the last day of the quarter. You have the three re remaining quarters, a little volatile ahead, but the people are looking at this as basically the bellwether of other stocks. And is this a template? Excellent. Is this is this a template moving forward for other stocks to consider the way they structure their offerings here? Yes, yes, I think they can consider that because uh, a lot of the domestics are really big, except they, you know, they're just hesitant to list. Uh, and because of their size, sometimes they will consider doing a foreign tranche or be, they're being convinced to do a foreign tranche. With this issue, we're showing that you know, an all-domestic tranche can be done so we can manage it and, and costs will be lower. Now, Ed, your fingers and your firm's fingers are all over the marketplace right now. I do <laughs> want to ask you, people are asking beyond this stock, uh, what's next, who's out of starting gate and when? Okay, yeah, no, in fact, uh, we're, very, we're very grateful and honored to, for our clients because we were doing uh, Wilcon, and then uh, a day, there was a one or two day overlap. Then we were doing Del Monte, the dollar preferreds, which will list next Friday. And then after that, uh, one day overlap, we were doing the RTBs for the government. And the RTBs are ongoing until next Wednesday, and that's doing pretty well also. So considering all these overlaps, you're thinking some appetite might have been diffused, but you're saying the take-up rates have been good? Yes, yes, yes. They're all, uh, they're all oversubscribed. Uh, Del Monte, in excess of $150 million, will make a uh, due announcement uh, in due course. Uh, the RTBs, uh, the National Treasurer now has a nice problem because she, she has so much demand and she wants to allocate, so she won't finalize it until next week. Well, it's a nice problem to have, right? Correct, yeah. I mean, look, we'll talk about the latter part of the year, not to be a Debbie Downer sure, here, sure. but looking at headwinds, you're talking about interest rates possibly coming up mid-year. I mean, you're looking at the Banco Central possibly taking the cues from the Fed. At the same time, inflation's coming up, a weaker peso coming in. Um, tell me, what do you think uh, is going to drive the market as well uh, beyond these externalities? Okay. No, no, you're right. Those are the headwinds we are all concerned with, so uh, we're very careful. Um, the, so the key is for IPOs, they will continue to be IPOs, but the good names with unique positions, and these are names that are generally household names or have a dominant position so that you will invest in them and be comfortable holding them for a medium or long term, that's one. In addition, there are so many uh, bond offerings uh, that are undergoing. In fact, I forgot to mention, we just finished uh, Mega World 8 billion initially, we raised 12 billion in the last so week. We've got a shelf registration yeah. up to 30 billion, right? Correct, correct. And then of course, San Miguel, we're, we're proceeding right now. We're just finalizing that, that's ongoing. And then, uh, you know, there are other, many other firms go, uh, you know, going to list too, so it's good. So outside the conventional mindset of going just the IPO route, you've got debt already coming yes. in, interest rates coming. Now, the question I have is, uh, in terms of levers of growth, when you're looking at the government's push right now, on yeah. one end, the infrastructure program, this robust record-breaking budget, on the other end, you're looking at a tax reform program. How much of this is factored in to your assessment and your advisory to your clients in terms of when to list and what to do in terms of their projections? Right. Now, good question. Um, basically, we are telling our clients that the government is really front-loading and actually spending already for infrastructure. We, we may not see it because you might think you see less PPPs, but the fact that the, we are, the government is willing to ac accept larger amounts of RTBs means they're front-loading expend expenditures in anticipation of the ODAs, uh, and that's why they're building the infra. So our advice to clients, corporates, is tap the markets now, whether it be an IPO, whether it be a stock rights, whether it be a bond offering, so that you can grow together with the government, anticipate it already. And one thing to note also is that public spending for January, the last figure we got was at 7%, single digit compared to the 14% last year. So are you saying then that given your optimism that there will be some upside in terms of the actual spending yes. within the year? Yes, we're, uh, we know they're going to catch up uh, and, and that's what excites me. We just don't see it, uh, but the government through the various agencies are already doing a lot of this. We're seeing some of it in the news about the rail projects. So they won't show up as being bidded out, 
but if they're ODA or government to government, that's still infrastructure spend for us. And on the on the on the rate fundraising side, are you concerned about the delay in the tax reform package? It's just package one out of five, mm -hmm. and yet it's in delayed and Congress is on break. Correct. Tell, tell me what about uh, that risk? Yeah, for, from our perspective, we're very hopeful for that. We think it will push anyway, but it's just a question of time, right? Uh, because. Actually, they are, as, you, as you mentioned, yeah, this is part one of several parts. So, so the, the individual or the corporate taxes would be in the latter part, and we want that to be addressed also. Well, certainly, that echoes uh, Secretary Dominguez uh, interviewed in Bloomberg as well, that he is confident about it. Finally, Ed, I mean, you're a man about town. You were at the Ducet earlier with Secretary Urbosa for the Real Estate Investment Trust issue. Question I have is, notwithstanding this offer to lower the float, uh, Tell me about the friction points on taxes. Is that enough to uh, guarantee that you're going to have something listed this year, or is that going to be too much of a deterrent? Yeah, um, it's great that the SEC is willing to revisit the minimum float uh, issue. Then she said that it will be subject to market. She's open to that. If the government is willing to, uh, I guess, readjust the position, especially in the, v the VAT for the transfers, if that is removed, uh, that will that will mean there'll be several companies rushing to go out the door. That's the that's the only other deterrent. It's really the float and uh, the the VAT. 